When I was a bit younger than I am these days, I fancied myself as a bit of a programmer. And when people wanted to program a long time ago, we got books. We didn't have this thing called the internet or YouTube. And behind me is an IBM PC, the original IBM PC. And so when you wanted to write code on it or something like that, you would have to find yourself some books. And this here, and this here, and this here were those sorts of books. Um, Peter Norton, who was the name behind Norton Antivirus, if you remember that, um, when he began he wrote tools like the Norton Utilities and also many other really good books. This one here, for example, is Assembly Language and the PC. And it really was a bit of a Bible. So if you wanted to learn the lowest level of an IBM PC, this book would tell you all about how DOS worked, how um, arithmetic in the CPU worked, how printing characters on the screen, um, assemblers, how to understand hexadecimal notation, really, really basic stuff like that, all the way through to, you know, I don't know, disk libraries and windows, all that sort of stuff. So if you wanted to learn how to program at the lowest level of your computer, these were excellent books. And then there was a sort of more generic book for programming in the PC. You can see I put some little things on there. Um, this one was owned by the Director of Planning and Transportation. Anyway, I think I've got it second hand, but this one told us the anatomy of the PC, input and output, the ROM software, video basics, keyboard basics, ROM BIOS basics, all of the things that made up the original 8088 and 80286, this was that new, it told us about the 80286. So there's actually programs in this, program listings in here that are in Microsoft Basic, but also in by the looks of an assembler, and it goes right down to talking about bit length. You know, so here we've got information about the color graphics adapter I/O ports. So the bits inside um, the data bits inside the ports, I guess, of the color graphics adapter, um, so that you knew which bits to poke on that. And then about disk operation control and how subdirectories worked and the keyboard and sound and all the rest. So again, a very helpful uh, book to have. You could kind of set these books side by side in, if you wanted to learn the semantics of how the machine worked, you'd look at this book. And if you wanted to write the assembly code, you'd look at this book. And that was the way we did it. If you wanted to know more about MS-DOS, the operating system, you would have a book like this one here, told you all about not only the commands in MS-DOS, it told you about the low level stuff like file allocation tables and um, IOCTLs and file name conventions and null modems, all that sort of stuff. It was all in books like that. And I found those absolutely fascinating back in the day Today, things have really changed a lot, but you know, back in those days, it was cool. Um, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed sitting there and just reading these books. I wasn't much of a programmer in the end. And then I found Unix and everything changed for me. Uh, I became more of a systems administrator. And two books are books that I still have and use to this very day because they're right there beside me, these ones. One about shell scripting, because I still write shell scripts and I still use Vim. I don't need to refer to this book that much these days. This one probably doesn't get that much love. But I bought this book and I learned everything I needed about the Vim editor or Vi Improved. So if you use Vim, I wholeheartedly recommend Steve Walleen's Vim book. And then this one here, it's got all the good stuff like um, for and while loops, um, shifts and if conditions and joins and aux and 
cut and merging and awk and said and all the things that are basically essential when you're writing shell scripts. So there's a little foray into some books that I used to use when I was growing up and they're still very valuable today, perhaps not as valuable as they once were because AI is taking over everything, including the internet and searching for resources like that on, on the web. But I still like to have them <laughs> sitting here gathering dust. Anyway, what were your experiences with books in the past um, and do you still use them today? Love to hear from you in the comments. If you've liked this short video, then uh, stick around, press, um, press that like button, subscribe to the channel and uh, put the notification bell to all so you get all the videos that come in from Al's Geek Lab. Until next time, take care and be excellent to each other. Bye for now.